the entrance antiphon and our hymn for this morning is number 545 sing a new song <laughs> Sing a new song unto the Lord, let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia. Rise, O children, from your sleep, your Savior now has come. He has turned your sorrow to joy and filled your soul with song. Sing a new song unto the Lord, let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia. Glad my soul, for I have seen the glory of the Lord. The trumpet sounds, the dead shall be raised. I know my Savior lives. Sing a new song unto the Lord, that your song may sung for a mountain high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. In the sight of the nations he has shown his deliverance. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Your spirit. My friends, today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter, and so to prepare our hearts to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. with the Holy Spirit. He 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. <clears throat> Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of dis disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because of their widows, were being negle neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at a table. Brothers, Select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles, who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Exalt you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the heart. With the ten-stringed lyre, chant his praises. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord. And all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. The eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us 
as we place our trust in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone rejected by humans, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scriptures, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whomever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me 
has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else, believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, you, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So my friends, it's with great joy that we can announce that on Monday, May 11th, the bishop has given us the okay to restart public daily mass. So we will resume our schedule of Monday through Friday, having mass at 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. that will be open to uh, the people to come and to receive communion. And on Saturdays at 9 a.m., we will have daily mass as well. Sunday mass will still be suspended, and so we'll still be posting mass online on Saturday evenings. Um, we've determined another number of procedures that we're going to have to follow uh, for daily mass, and so I'm just going to go through those real quick. First, uh, we ask that parishioners sanitize your hands on entering and leaving the church. We're working on having hand sanitizer available here for you, but if you have uh, little bottles of your own that you can bring, that would be helpful as well. Um, households need to sit six feet apart from each other. And so whether that is through just on our own figuring it out or we haven't decided if we're going to have tape on the pews or not. Right now there is tape on the pews, but I don't know if we're going to keep it that way um, to help us remain six feet apart. Um, we're also going to ask you to sit in every other pew to maintain social distancing. Uh, the presentation of the gifts at the offertory is not going to happen. It's going to be suspended. And there'll be no sign of peace, just like before masses were suspended, also no communion from the chalice. Um, when you're coming up in the communion line, we ask you to maintain social distance. And so what we're going to ask is that you, if you look, well, well, you can't see it here, but when you come to church, you, you'll see on the floor there are tiles. And so if you keep two tiles between you and the next person, that's about six feet. Um, we're going to continue to ask you to consider receiving communion in, in the hand. If you don't feel comfortable receiving communion in the hand and you want to receive on the tongue, we simply ask that you be in the back of the communion line so that if there's a mistake and my hand touches your tongue, then I can sanitize immediately and I'm not uh, spreading that to anyone else. Um, we ask you not to congregate before or after Mass. Um, and also we will be taking the missalettes out of the pews. Um, they're not going to be available. So if you use the missalettes for prayer, or to read along with the readings. Um, we invite you to either bring your own missile, uh, personal hand missiles from home or to look those things up on your phone. Um, and the Wednesday Novena of the Miraculous Medal will be suspended because we don't want to have those reusable sheets uh, for the Novena. Like I said, we'll continue to tape Sunday Masses and post those on Saturday. Okay, so now to the homily. You know, I've been taking a lot of walks lately walks around the church campus and walks around the neighborhood, walks to the bayou, walks at Howard Park. I said to Julia before the Mass that I take walks, and she asked, do you go for walks at Howard Park wearing your black priest uniform? I said, no, I wear shorts and a t-shirt. And partly those walks are about getting my steps in, you know. Before the coronavirus, I was a good, like, two-month stretch of getting 10,000 steps a day. I was really proud of that. But when quarantine hit, and I was suddenly spending long stretches of the day hunched over a computer, editing video and trying to get things to work. Well, that stretch of 10,000 steps was snapped pretty quickly. So the walks I've been taking are partly about trying to get my steps in, but mostly they're my mental health time to get away, to get out of the rectory or out of the office, time to just get away from video editing or away from a camera. Time to get fresh air and sunshine and feel the breeze on my face. And as I walk, I'll notice things. I'll notice the trees or the birds or the, or the water. I'll see the clouds. 
and the sun set and for a little while forget how much I want things to return to normal. It's soothing. And many times, when I'm on one of my walks, I'll drift into spontaneous prayer, praying for you or for our staff or for my family or my friends or just for the people that I pass. One day last week, I took a walk down by the bayou and happened to pass a mom with her daughter. The daughter, she looked to be about 18 or 19 years old, and she was all dressed up in her graduation cap and gown. She, uh, she was there at the bayou with her mom, and they were taking graduation photos. And I want to tell you folks, it was such a pure moment, seeing these two young ladies smiling and laughing. I looked at them as I walked. I looked at this mom and her daughter. And I had one of those spontaneous prayer moments, you know. I remember my heart turned to the Lord in prayer, and I just thanked God for them, for that girl and her mom. And I prayed, Jesus, help them to know how good they are. You think about it, what they were doing was so good. I thought of how this girl, clearly a senior in high school, had been robbed of her semester, or her prom, her graduation. I thought how she could very easily have been at home sulking, wallowing in the injustice of it all. But here she was with her mom, taking graduation photos at the bayou. It was so pure, so wholesome, so good. And here was this mom, not at all immune to the stresses that we're all feeling right now, taking the time to take graduation photos for her daughter. Because that's what she needed. That's what her little girl needed. So very good. And as I walked, I saw other walkers like myself passing them and smiling and congratulating the daughter smiling and laughing with them, sharing their joy. And it was beautiful, and my heart swelled with a desire, a desire that could only really be answered in prayer. Lord, affirm their goodness in their hearts. My friends, today the Lord wants to affirm our goodness. We are sinners, to be sure, but this is not what defines us. You and I are not defined by our sins, our failings. No, in fact, Peter, in our second reading, tells us of our goodness when he says that we are living stones, a holy priesthood, patterned after Jesus Christ. He writes, Come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God, and like living stones. Let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. This spiritual house, well, this is the dwelling of God on earth, the God who lives in the heart of each and every baptized believer. And that spiritual house is built with living stones. You are those living stones. I am that one of those living stones. You and me and your family and your friends, we are those living stones, that holy priesthood. We are made so by Jesus, made a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own. We are living stones. We are priests. Of course, there are the ordained priests like myself, and Father Joe, those of us who are called to offer the Eucharistic sacrifice, to bring the sacraments, to bring Jesus to his people. But in a larger sense, Peter is telling us that we are all priests in our own way, in imitation of Jesus Christ, our high priest. We are priests, and priests offer sacrifice. That's what they do. And the sacrifice that we are called to offer as a holy priesthood, living stones, a holy nation, we offer the sacrifice of our lives. 
we sacrifice, we give of ourselves to Christ and to each other. It's what that mom was doing at the bayou that night, sacrificing her evening to bring her daughter some joy. It's what Bart and Joey and Brandon and these lectors have been doing, giving of their time, sacrificing their time to record these masses. It's what our teachers have been doing, educating on Zoom. It's what our parents have been doing, working from home while at the same time trying to juggle their kids' school from home. It's what our doctors and nurses and first responders have been doing, heroically sacrificing their energy and sweat and tears and sometimes even their personal safety to care for the sick. Sacrifice is built in our, into our DNA. As human beings, even more so as Christians. It's what we're called to do. It's what we're meant to do. And it's what we gladly do for each other. My friends, at the start of these online masses, I gave a homily where I said that I looked forward to hearing how God gave you new sight during this crisis. I still look forward to that. And with daily Mass returning on Monday, I can't wait to see you and to hear from you. But some of the new sight that he's given me during this crisis has been a revelation of the goodness, the beauty that surrounds me in you. You are beautiful. And how I've missed you. In our Gospel, Jesus tells us to believe him, that he is in the Father, and the Father is in him. There is a great unity between Jesus and the Father. Jesus' entire mission was to reveal the Father to us. And then our mission in sacrificing, in loving each other, in proclaiming his good news to this world through our words and actions is to reveal him to everyone else. And in revealing him, he reveals the Father. This is who we are. This is what defines us, not our sin. Our Lord. Now, I realize that this isn't the most challenging homily I've ever given. Maybe not even the most content-rich homily, but in talking to some of you these past weeks and in dealing with my own junk during this crisis, I've been reminded of how we're all battling a lie, a core lie, that we're not good enough, that we're bad, that we're not lovable. And that night on the bayou, when my heart was so moved by that mom and her daughter, the message I, I felt in my heart from our Lord was, see how beautiful they are. Feel how your heart is moved by them. How much more is God's heart moved by us? I, don't, I, don't, I never met them before. I don't know them. But their beauty moved my heart. Jesus Christ knows us better than we know ourselves, infinitely better. How much more is his heart moved by us, by you? and your family, your little sacrifices. This sentiment is summed up well by another story of something that had happened recently. One of our middle schoolers, one of our edge kids, a girl named Angelina Fucci, she posted a video for Nurse Appreciation Week. Now, Angelina is a very, very talented young lady. Uh, and the video was a video of her sitting at a piano singing a praise and worship song. Lauren Daigle's You Say. Again, such beauty and goodness and such a small gesture, but it was the lyrics of the song, sung so beautifully by Angelina, that struck me profoundly. I keep fighting voices in my head that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am, because I need to know. 
You say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. You say I am held when I'm falling short. And when I don't belong, you say I am yours and I believe. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Lord, I believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As people called by God a royal priesthood, let us present our needs to him with confidence. For all of us baptized into Christ's church and the royal priesthood, may the Lord continue to increase our faith for the sake of his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety and protection of all our men and women serving in the military, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the seminarians, our priests, and all those who are discerning a vocation to the priesthood or religious life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all mothers, May they be blessed with good health and be surrounded by the love of their families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering in various ways from the effects of the coronavirus, may our merciful and loving Father strengthen our faith and trust in his goodness and divine providence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may he who has prepared a place for them welcome them to the splendor of their heavenly home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to abortions for which this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please pray for all who have died from the coronavirus, and Emily Wolzinski, Annie Sebastian, Patricia Kayajan, Jack Tilly, Reverend Gerald Dolan, and Monsignor John Vargas, who died recently. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been away from the church, May they come back home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you know our needs before we ask. 
please hear and answer our prayers this day according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Offertory Hymn is number 456, You Are Mine. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fear. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am here. I am hope for all who are hopeless. I am eyes for all who long to see. In the shadows of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. I am strength for all the despairing. For the ones who dwell in shame, all the blind will see, the lame will all run free, and all will know my name. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that, as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Blessed is he. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of it, the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Ignatius of Antioch, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice for reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray together the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Take and eat, take and eat. This is my body given up for you. Take and drink, take and drink. This is my blood given up for you. The cornerstone that God has made, a chosen stone and precious in his eyes. You are God's dwelling place on the earth, like living stones, a temple for God's praise. Take and eat, take and eat. This is my body given up for you. Take and drink, take and drink. This is my blood given up for you. 
I am the true vine, and you are the branches, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me and I in him bears fruit in plenty. Alleluia. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Truth to keep that love.